Okay, moving on to X to One update with Mr. Salvestrini. And Matt tonight will be joined by Mr. Egan as well, and Mr. Hanahan, who is a technology integrator for us at the high school. You might know Tom by name, if not by face, because uh, he is our go-to guy in, in many, many ways around technology and the website and Google Apps and Google Classroom. As a matter of fact, I was just calling on Tom today to help out in a couple of ways. Uh, and as they are probably switching over from one machine to another or going to use that, Jill, do you want to? Evening. So as you know, we began um, Bring Your Own Device for freshmen in January. It was the end of January, so it's really only been in place for two months. But we thought it was important to come back to the Board of Ed and give you an update. We have brought the X to One committee together, and we've um, done some gathering of uh, data from our students, from our parents, and certainly from our faculty. So we'd like to share that information with you um, as we're looking to move forward and looking for ways to improve our process in the future as well. So I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Salvestrini and um, Mr. Egan and Mr. Honahan. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna keep the positive vibes flowing today with a nice <laughs> update on BYOD. Um, but as, as uh, Dr. Coranty just shared with you, uh, we are here to give you an update on how the ninth grade BYOD is going. Um, in addition to the update, we'll be sharing with you some of our recommendations for next, next steps in this initiative and moving forward. Um, as Jill had mentioned, um, as you, we review the information together, I think it's, it's useful to keep in mind that the initiative was rolled out under three months ago, okay? Um, that said, uh, we have some very useful and encouraging information to share with you. Um, um, just like we had in our initial uh, presentation in the fall, I'll be sharing you, with you some information that we gathered from parents, teachers, and students. And um, uh, I think Bill stole a little bit of my thunder. I wanted to uh, thank um, Tom Honahan. Uh, there are lots of people that have been very helpful in the rollout of the BYOD initiative for ninth graders. Um, Tom is half of our tech integrator team that's here tonight. Uh, Ms. Hannah Magnin is the other half. Um, they've been really instrumental in um, supporting the teachers in their implementation of technology, um, addressing student needs, providing professional learning, um, and also gathering a lot of the feedback which I have to share with you this evening. So uh, a, a nod to Tom and, and his counterpart, Hannah, Hannah, who couldn't be here this evening. Hold on a second here. So um, I'd like to start off with a brief review of some of the activities that we've been engaged in in the fall. Uh, um, as, you'll, as you'll see, I think you're going to have to look over here. Um, uh, our efforts really focused on two main categories, uh, communication to parents, staff, and students, and also ongoing professional learning that we're providing to teachers. Okay. Um, as I said, Bill is going to be uh, presenting here with me, and I'm going to pass the, after he takes a drink of water and <laughs> rehydrates. Um, I'm going to pass it over to him so he can share with you, with you some information on the, the parent feedback, okay? Sorry, I just dragged in from outside, battling a cold, and it's been a long couple of days. But, uh, certainly, we wanted to solicit feedback from parents, and we sent out a brief survey to get a, a quick snapshot of, of what we could get back from them. The, the questions were designed around uh, concerns raised by parents in the fall, and it was just one method of gathering input. Gathering input. We did have some pre-rollout feedback that we had received from them. Uh, there were three families that expressed reservations about using a device. We met with each of those families individually uh, to try and best address each of their individual needs and how we could, could work out using the BYOD format to, to best meet their needs. Ongoing concerns. Uh, we received a couple emails in the past two months with specific, specific concerns, uh, one regarding a broken screen. And there was an incident in a class where uh, the air server had shared some information, uh, but we've, we've uh, been able to correct that problem shortly. It was, it was addressed right after that. Uh, the survey. We sent the survey to gather some reliable feedback. There were short questions that focused on points that parents expressed to us in the fall. We recognized it was only one point, one type of feedback. About 25% of the parents in the freshman class responded to the survey, which is not atypical from other surveys that we send out. The questions. 
I purchased a device uh, for my child specifically for BYOD. 53% uh, of the class already had a device. Um, I think that was pretty important information to know that they were ready, in many cases, already brought them to school. 46.8% uh, did not, and they did purchase for uh, the purposes of using our program. Um, the feedback, again, reflects a little over half our student population had a device and we hope we're using it. And we wanted to make sure we were conscious of that point that already half the class had a device and was hopefully prepared to bring them in. Responsible use. My child uses their device in a responsible manner. This is one of the questions that parents had in, in the beginning of the year, would the child uh, use the device responsibly? 72.7% .7 of parents uh, responded that their child is using the device responsibly in school. Um, again, this was a concern from the fall. We wanted to make sure that was addressed. Time management. Having a device has helped my child use their time more efficiently as a learner. Here we want to see if parents notice the positive impact on students having devices uh, on time management. Later you'll see some feedback from students regarding this area, but certainly the results here for parents are not that clear. You know, 41.6% were undecided and they weren't sure whether this was uh, helping or not. My child reports that they use the device in school. And this question, 16% of parents say their child uses the device always. 38% of parents say their child uses the device very often. 33% of parents say their child uses the devices sometimes. Together, that's 85% of our kids are reporting that the child is using the device in school. Uh, we consider that to be positive feedback for the start of the, the program. And keep in mind, not all classes have students bring in the devices because they're mixed grades. So you might have you know, a grade 9, 10 class uh, in, in one classroom at the same time. So they may not be using the device. So that could also skew some of the reporting on that. My child feels that having a device enhances the learning experience. Again, we, we find this to be pretty positive. Students are saying that, that, again, telling their parents that having a device in hand has helped them. Uh, as you can see, 60% uh, say that it's helped them uh, within school. Additional feedback from parents. Uh, some have said, we've heard from a few parents, that weight of the device uh, is a problem, that they have to carry a device on top of all their books in school. Uh, screen time has been a concern we've heard from some parents and certainly something we, we consider as well and we let the teachers drive uh, the use of how, they, how often they use devices in the classroom. And we have had one report of a broken screen. Um, and we want to solicit, solicit additional feedback from parents through a ninth grade parent forum on May 17th at 9 a.m. where it will help drive uh, our program further. You know, what ways can, can parents really help us uh, make the program better moving forward? So that's the parent portion. At this point, I'll turn it back to, to Matt, who can carry us the rest of the way. Thank you, Bill. So as I said before, um, in addition to the parent feedback, we solicited some feedback from staff. Uh, we used a variety of methods to, to gather this information, everything from informal conversations with teachers in the lunchroom, um, uh, Surveys, we uh, sent out a department survey asking for feedback on the BYOD initiative. We did one-on-one -on -one teacher interviews. Um, we had conversations uh, throughout the rollout at department chair meetings. And we also convened a, uh, a BYOD committee in March on March 15th with a, a wide representation of high school constituents uh, um, to make sure that we gathered their input on how things were going. Here are some of the, here's the feedback that we, um, or some questions that we asked teachers to help focus the feedback uh, that they wanted to share. So one of the questions we asked was, how is each student having a device impacted their learning? And we started with this slide because uh, in preparing this presentation and having conversations with uh, the tech integrators uh, and other members of our team, we really felt that this feedback was very important. Uh, certainly you can read the quotes that are there, um, but the consistent theme that came through was uh, uh, noticing that the student's ability to choose the tool that best meets their needs has had a significant impact on how they approach the learning process. And we felt like this is a reflection of um, opportunity to, to, for teachers to personalize learning more. You know, that idea that not one size fits all. Uh, and that the, the technology that the students have in hand allow teachers to uh, to really look at uh, ways that they can offer uh, learning to students in a different way. Um, 
uh, through make, helping uh, offering thoughtful choices to the students uh, in their designing of their instruction. Now the question we asked, uh, how is each student having a device impacted their, their learning? Again, here's a quote for you to take a look at. Um, another theme that they, the teachers uh, uh, that came through in these questions uh, was the opportunity to help students collaborate more readily and more meaningfully. Uh, I can share with you that I've seen students collaborate and share information dynamically in real time uh, with students that are not in their classroom course within their classroom, uh, not in their classroom, and actually at different schools. We, I, I observed a lesson where there were students uh, in a science class that were working collaboratively with students from Weston High School um, on a seed project uh, in real time. Uh, and that really was fantastic to see, very powerful learning. Um, and that's that opportunity to, that technology provides to collaborate in the learning process. Now the question we ask teachers is, how has this pilot impacted your teaching? How has your planning changed? Notable about these responses um, to the question was the teacher's willingness and his desire to look at their instructional practice and consider how they might want to take a more flexible approach to delivering instruction and designing and delivering instruction in a way um, which uh, allows students greater flexibility um, greater ownership, and there are some bullets up there that uh, sort of summarize some key pieces of feedback, whether that's using a variety of online applications or resources, um, adapting lessons to meet student needs, um, and also a greater dis uh, reflecting a, a greater disposition of teachers to offer more open-ended learning experiences for students. Further question uh, was, what challenges have you encountered so far? Um, were you able to solve them and how? I'll give you a chance to take a look at those quotes. Um, but with this uh, new openness came a recognition that shifts in instructional practice need to occur. I think that's been a theme in some of the slides I provided before. This is great feedback. This is feedback which we want to hear. Um, this is something which we have been working on through professional learning experiences with our teachers, provided and offered to them in a wide variety of, of of uh, platforms, whether that's large group, small group, or even one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but that feedback that teachers are recognizing that they want to change their instructional approach. Uh, in addition, uh, teachers offered some relevant feedback regarding the hardware uh, and the infrastructure. Uh, a recognition that uh, as we use devices for a wider range of tasks, uh, they began to seize different strengths and uh, of, these, uh, of these resources that they want to take into consideration as they plan their instruction. There was a piece of feedback regarding uh, challenges that students had printing wirelessly from their devices. Now, I think this, is, this was very helpful, but I also want to make sure it's clear it wasn't an infrastructure issue. It was more an understanding. Uh, each device, in order to different types of devices, whether that's a Mac, PC, Chromebook, each have specific protocols which you have to follow in order to get set up to print wirelessly. It was those, uh, we provided students with resources online, but I think we needed to work on making sure that students understood where to go to access the information. Um, sometimes it's offering it once or twice is not enough, but maybe more times, uh, to make sure that students understand where to go, uh, to make sure that they can get the information to set up their devices to print wirelessly. Important clarification, it wasn't the fact that we didn't have the infrastructure, it was to make sure that we communicate to students how you go about addressing it for yourself. In addition, we asked teachers, what additional resources would you feel are necessary for large, for a broader rollout of BYOD? First and foremost was the desire for more professional learning. I can tell you through my conversations, uh, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have my office downstairs in, in the Library Media Center, so I see Tom and Hannah and their work, and they are very often meeting and collaborating with teachers to um, look at the, the lesson plans that they have, have conversations with teachers, how could they can utilize technology to integrate learning. Happens throughout the course of the day. Um, really very powerful work. And there's a desire, teachers are coming to, to the TIs for that support. Um, another thing which was really notable was uh, that departments are setting aside time in their monthly meetings to talk about what is best practice in, in utilizing technology when designing instruction. 
okay? Um, and that's, the, that's a great conversation to be having. Uh, we continue to work with uh, DTF deaths to bolster uh, the infrastructure in non-instructional spaces for Wi-Fi. Uh, last year when we uh, looked for this rollout for ninth grade, the focus was on making sure we had strong and reliable Wi-Fi connection on instructional spaces. I'll talk a little bit more about this later. Our next stage is, uh, step is gonna be looking at some key non-instructional spaces, places where students hang out when they're not in class, where they may wanna be doing work, and what we can do to provide them that access, all right? Um, also, uh, some feedback that we had received from teachers was making sure that we have a proactive approach to help support students who may not be able to afford devices. Um, had one or two examples this fall, where uh, this uh, winter, where a teacher came, a student which we did we thought had a device. Uh, teacher noticed that they needed some support. I worked uh, directly with uh, um, Ari Rothman, who is the ninth grade supervisor, uh, school counselor, and the classroom teachers, to make sure we got that student a device. I thought that was a really great example of the teacher uh, being tuned into the needs of the students. Um, and it wasn't that they didn't have a device, is that the device that they brought in really didn't meet the specifications that we needed and we wanted to make sure that they, they had a resource, okay? And we'll continue to have conversations uh, with school counselors uh, to make sure that they are on the lookout for those types of situations. So thinking ahead, um, what are the next steps with our staff? You may recall on the right-hand side, this is a graphic of the SAMR model. Um, it's a representation of how you implement technology within the learning environment. One of the things that we're gonna continue to do is to review and revise our digital citizenship lessons at the middle and the high school so we can ensure that students are prepared to use technology in a safe and responsible manner. We'll continue to offer differentiated professional learning to support teachers moving towards, uh, moving up that SAMR scale towards a more transformational use of technology within the classroom. We continue to focus on identifying high value resources and applications that teachers can use in the learning environment. And we're gonna reinforce creative ways to manage student devices within the classroom. Lastly, uh, we asked students to tell us their thoughts, share their thoughts. We interviewed ninth grade students in a variety of settings, individually, in small group, and whole class. Students were asked a set of questions, and here are some of the highlights of their responses. To the question, how often and in what capacity do you use your device during the day, all, students represent, all, all subjects were represented in this, when, um, in this question and the majority of students reported using their devices every day, at least in one class. You can see at the bottom there uh, a list of some sample activities which students uh, were engaged in when using the device. We asked students, how has having a device impacted your learning? You'll see the student quote there. And allow me to summarize the bullet points up there with a, a th sort of three themes that came through. Students emphasize that this technology provides them a convenience for learning, um, helps them organize the information that they need throughout the course of the day and for their work at home, and helps them feel more productive. The question we asked them was, does having a device change how you interact with your teachers and peers? The reason that we asked students this question is because there was a concern from parents when we had a conversation in, in the fall that once you put a screen in front of them, they'll be paid more attention to the screen than the person next to them or the teacher in the front of the room. And I wanted to make sure we circled back to that question uh, and ask students their thoughts and be able to make sure that we have a continuum uh, of that conversation. The majority of students reported little or no differences and teacher or peer intera interactions since the BYOD rollout. However, students' uh, comments are uh, focused on the following areas. I thought it was really uh, very insightful that students said, having the technology in hand allows me to reach out to my teacher and email them um, uh, if I need assistance, if I need clarification on a task, uh, when it's not necessarily convenient for me to 
stop by after class to ask the question, or perhaps I'm not a child who's less inclined to approach a teacher. Um, the technology offers that opportunity to, to continue to have a connection with te their teacher about learning. Um, students also suggested some strategies of how we can manage the devices during, within the learning environment during instruction. We, I thought, again, we thought that this was really very useful. Um, what was notable was the student recognition and the willingness to share this understanding that these devices are both a powerful tool and a potential distraction. Okay, and we all know that. I mean, uh, I mean, how many of us are tempted to check our phone when they we, uh, when when it buzzes? Um, I would imagine even right now we're tempted to check our devices that we might have in hand or 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 whatever it may be. This is a real challenge, whether that's for high school students or whether that's for adults. Um, th our students are giving us feedback. Uh, how great is it that ninth graders are sharing with us that they recognize that this is a potential distraction? What we need to be able to do is help them with the tools, provide them the, the tools to understand how to turn it off, how to prioritize your tasks, how to manage technology so it works for them, not work, not, so they're not following it all of the time. Um, so we'll do that through our digital citizenship lessons and also through collaborating with classroom teachers so they can um, make sure that they are managing the classroom in a way where that's a piece of, of their planning process. Continuing, <clears throat> we asked, what, challenge ha what challenges have you encountered so far uh, and will you be able to solve them? All right. Um, this echoes a little bit of a theme I touched on with the classroom teachers. Students talked about the infrastructure. Uh, now infrastructure sort of overgeneralizes that feedback um, but uh, students are looking for opportunities to do their work when they're in, they have non-structured time. Library, not a concern, well covered. But we have students that stay after school for sports. We have students that may stay after school for theater, for example. We were getting feedback that the coverage in those non-instructional spaces are not as strong, mainly because we prioritize the learning environment first. So um, this is something which we have a plan for moving forward. Uh, I believe Bill talked a little bit about the weight of the device. Um, students report looking, reported looking forward, eagerly forward to having e-books uh, rather than textbooks. <clears throat> that said, a little bit of the feedback was also, I like having an e-book, but when it comes down to studying, I like to have the, the text in hand. So I think there's a challenge there. Um, I mean, we'll continue to look into that e-book as a resource for students. I think it's important to keep in mind that um, the publishers, textbook publishers, are not eager to get into that space. Um, and also moving into that space is costly. And there's a cost which is associated with that. But we are looking into that. We are having some conversations about that. And we will continue to do so. <clears throat> Lastly, it's great to get feedback from students uh, where they're looking for teacher, looking and encouraging teachers to use what we call learning management software, like Moodle or Google Classroom. Um, to facilitate the learning process. Uh, these, these platforms allow students to uh, engage in, in a lot of learning outside of the classroom and bring uh, their thoughts and their work to the classroom um, and to collaborate with students in, in real time. It's a repository for information. Uh, it's an area where, where the um, classroom teacher can keep track of the work that they're doing. And the feedback that students uh, have been giving us is we really like these platforms. So what we're going to be doing is looking into other options moving forward um, along with what we are already using right now. So we asked students for next steps. And we have two basic categories of feedback. Regarding infrastructure, um, we'll continue to widen our coverage in the areas other than classrooms. Um, I talked to Scott Barnett. He has 18 Wi-Fi drop points, which are on order. And they will be installed in a priority fashion in those non-instructional spaces to see if we to broaden coverage for students. Students are looking for more plugs, um, so they they're they're coming in with their devices charged. But when you use them for six hours a day, they and for use them for some pretty heavy lifting when it comes to learning, you need to be able to charge them. So our plan is to create is to to put um, outlets um, not outlets I'm sorry. Um, power strips in the back of classrooms so the students can be plugging in, okay? And also um, providing students uh, 
additional uh, resources and strategies to uh, troubleshoot minor technical issues. So in this area, we're thinking about um, the development of a digital repository for students uh, so that and we can post it online. And if a student has a question about how to um, uh, print wirelessly, uh, they can go and look at the video uh, along with the print resources. Um, and, and that's another way where we can provide information for students and help them troubleshoot independently. Um, we have talked to thinking about uh, possibly adding some additional connections meetings in the fall so that we can have students bring their devices and have conversations, say, what are your questions about your, you have about your device as we start the school year? Let us troubleshoot with you. And also directing them to the link on the website of the high school so they know where to go when we're not with them and where they're not with somebody where they to start to solve their own problems about their devices. Of course, we're still gonna wanna make sure that we have uh, uh, technical resources, whether that's tech experts or um, our DTS crew or even our tech integrators available for students when they have those, those issues which are not minor issues but we need to address, okay? Oh, in the area of learning, <clears throat> um, we're, uh, the, the, the recommendations here was to uh, have students, um, have more teachers use student devices during the school day, okay, great to hear. Um, have more teachers to commit to using the learning management system like Google Classroom or Moodle. I touched upon that a little bit earlier. Um, and continue to have student, uh, allow students to handwrite notes and, or, and use hard copy resources where appropriate or where students feel that that best fits their needs. And again, I'm thinking back to conversations that we had with parents in the fall. Parents were asking, just if they have this device, are you now going to require students to take notes on the device all the time? It goes back to that first one of those first slides. It's about choice that we're providing. If for a student, if they if taking uh, taking notes longhand works, great. If you're a student that likes to take notes notes digit uh, on your laptop and that helps you keep organized, great. Um, uh, it's about providing them with that flexibility. Okay. So lastly, we thought we'd wrap up with sharing a a brief video which we put together. One of the best things about BYOD is with my freshmen, if I want them to read a really current news article that just came out of like the New York Times today, I can link it on my Moodle and they can actually edit it, highlight, and we can have the conversation. I don't have to worry about, do I have time to photocopy? Whereas right now I'm standing here with an article for my AP class that I just had to photocopy because they don't have computers yet. I like it because for one it saves time the kids don't have to spend a lot of time logging on to the cows which was always a, it took time to transition the other thing I really like is that now at the end of a lesson I can more easily assess what went right what went wrong and adjust for the next day or sometimes even in the middle I can change a document even for different levels of kids and push push those documents out for the next day I don't have to go through the process of making the copies and worrying about making a mistake in it um, if I can push things out to the kids much more quickly, I can adjust the pace of the lesson depending on where they are. And you just never know from year to year where they're going to be on a given day. Okay, it is amazing because I can totally change the way I approach a class. So because I'm in and out of different classes, so today I'm working with juniors and with freshmen. And I have to go and figure out, I had to schedule cows and get it all working to get the Nearpod to work with the juniors, whereas the freshman yesterday I went in and said, okay, just go to this website, open this form, do your brainstorming activity, and then we're going to analyze the data. I couldn't have built that lesson a year, like even six months ago, with the, with, with the whole grade. And now we can. It's magic. Yeah. A lot easier to get your homework done during school, nice. like online homework. Where do you do your homework during your free period? The library. Library? Or like, you can go, you can do it in the cafeteria now, because it'd be what it'd be. Oh, sweet. You don't need to use the library computers. Less worksheets to carry around, I like less folders and binders. 
you get a lighter load to carry around the school, and it's easier to keep track of everything. Online textbooks would make my life so much easier because I have to keep carrying them in my backpack, like home and school and school from my backpacks. It's very organized. Yeah, it's much easier to use because you can just access it like it's right there instead of like digging into your backpack for papers. Taking notes, I think it's like a lot easier to take notes online like in classes and I just like that format better. It's easier than writing. Yeah, there's yeah. more tools you can use. It's awesome how I can look up stuff on my iPad while doing work on the computer. It's much more efficient. Uh, it takes forever to log into the, like, the laptops on the carts. So to just to have your own thing that you can log into really quickly is really helpful. The carts, I think it's a lot quicker to have your own computer with you because if there's the cart, there's always the line and you have to plug it in and there's all this kind of complicated mess that goes along with it. But if you have your own computer, you just basically pull it out of your backpack and have your own login. With BYOD, my teachers are more willing to do creative projects because they know that the kids will put in the effort with the technology at their disposal. My science teacher recently allowed us to do a project that showed how pressure works and we could either make a movie or we could present in front of the class and more people chose to make the movie because it was a more interactive and creative option. Coming in is kind of hard sometimes. Yeah. It's not always like easy to do it. Sometimes you have things to do. Yeah. So sending an email, you, you have like your computer in front of me, you and you can just do it. It makes my life easier. It helps me access support. It helps me learn in my own way. At my own pace. It makes my education more meaningful. Definitely roll it out to every other grade. Yes, that was our very own Spencer Reeves over there with the cameo appearance. And, you know, autographs afterwards, if you like. So, um, <clears throat> so um, you saw the student recommendation uh, at the end of the video. Uh, but based on the parent feedback that we've gathered, uh, the initial feedback has been very positive, and we will continue to gather information from parents moving forward. Uh, the BYOD uh, feedback from our March meeting uh, that had broad representation from staff uh, was also similarly positive, incurring, uh, encouraging a, a broader implementation moving forward. And student feedback overwhelmingly supported a broader uh, based use of BYOD next year. Uh, the recommendation that we have is to broaden this opportunity for all students and the scope of the initiative so that all NCHS students can benefit from the opportunity next year. Okay. Thank you very much. And we're ready to take questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sofstri. Um I want to start by thanking you uh, for all your efforts this you know, year. It's been a big year for the district, and you know, but you being new to the district this year yourself, it uh, you've got a lot, you had a lot of on your plate. And um, I, I saw you at the beginning of the year rolling this out to the freshman parents, and I was really impressed with, you know, it, it was an uncertain time for people, and um, you answered everyone's questions and made them feel comfortable. And you know, not everybody was perfectly comfortable, but um, I think you did a great job getting the parents and the kids. Um, you know, on board and, and willing to try something new. Change isn't always easy, and um, I think you did an outstanding job. Um, and I also wanted to say I, um, I, I'm, uh, you know, the, um, you know, this one-to-one -one initiative is not, um, you know, uh, a, a new, you know, it's not out there in the education world. Everything I'm reading now is, is saying, you know, we're kind of, just going at, at, we might even be a little bit behind the curve in, in where we are in technology and, and its implementation in, in, within our district. And um, 
So um, I appreciate all the, all your efforts to, to kind of get us in line. Because, I mean, there's pre some pretty exciting things out there that we could be doing once we get the professional learning in place um, with our teachers. I think it, it, it could be a very exciting time in education for us. So anyway, I wanted to open it up to everybody for any questions or comments you have for Thank you. Hazel. I just want to thank you also for the bringing this out, but also uh, watching. We were fortunate enough to visit the high school and see how the uh, students were using the one-on-one -on -one in ver a variety of ways, and the other ways that the computers are being used at every grade level. And it was um, exciting to see that happening. And I think because of seeing the children that are particularly in the elementary grades that are using computers so um, seemingly easily mm -hmm. and then going to the middle school and seeing the same thing uh, that's got to be building year upon year making it so that it's easier for them to come into the high school and be doing it on a much longer fuller day and a bigger schedule so thank you for all the organization that's gone into that also thank you very much sherry um, I, I think this is a great presentation. I love the approach with the 360 stakeholder feedback, looking at what the parents thought, what the teachers thought, and what the students thought. Um, I do think this is the biggest change for the parents. I think, I, I actually am a parent of a high school freshman, and I, in preparation for this presentation tonight, kind of took him aside and asked him his thoughts on BYOD, and he kind of was like, you know, <clears throat> this is how, this is school. This is, of course, it's an efficient tool. Um, he gave me some very compelling examples of how the technology is, is integrated into the classroom. He talked about, in Honors English, how he can now work on an essay and the teacher real time can be providing input and, and feedback on the essay and um, you know, real time collaboration and efficient. And so for, from his standpoint, this was just, you know, this is a 21st century education. Right. So. Um, I, but I, I appreciate that you looked at the feedback from all the different angles, and um, I, I do think that the you know rolling the BYOD out to the whole high school is critical for us to um, to stay in front of our 21st century education. Um, just I guess a, a comment and then a question sure. is, um, and it's not directly related with BYOD, but the digital citizenship curriculum. I do think that we need to continually be relooking that because yeah. I think technology is moving so quickly that um, you know what I think we may have first put in place as you know kind of the fundamentals of digital citizenship for fifth and sixth graders. You know, I think they're now moving beyond that. So I think we always have to be relooking that curriculum and making sure that um, as you know, new trends are emerging, whether they be the new messenger apps or whatever it may be that we're on top of that and educating our kids on that. And then my question is, um, you talked about how the students gave some feedback on managing the devices during instruction. I'm just wondering if currently there are pro consistent protocols in place for the teachers to handle with that, or is that yeah. something we're working on, or do we envision consistent protocols, or how we're approaching that? We offer, we've offered teachers some strategies. I think that, again, as we talk about with students, not one size fits all. I think there are some teachers which are very comfortable with managing uh, and have their own strategy, either by experience or by preference, uh, how to manage student engagement. One of the things that we have uh, offered teachers is it's quite simple, actually. It's sort of a red light, green light, yellow light. And um, if students walk in, and uh, it's, it's pretty fundamental, but it's, it's if you need that, uh, if you, that helps you uh, manage the classroom. Uh, green light means devices out and ready to be used because we're going to be utilizing them for uh, the majority of the learning today. Uh, yellow light is keep them on your desk uh, but closed because we're going to be using them for a portion of the classroom but not quite yet. And then red light is you can put it away because we're going to be doing something else in the classroom. So again, that was something an idea which was generated and shared out with teachers for those individuals that felt like that would be a helpful resource. Again, I think that it's important to, to share out that not every teacher needs that, but the teacher that does, that's a, good, that's a useful tool, okay? And then students see it enough where if they walk in and they've got it there, they see it on the board, they know what that means. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just one other sure. quick question is, I'm wondering as we lay out our BYOD strategy, if not only are we looking kind of at our peer schools, but also looking ahead to the, the, the colleges, um, because I recall from one of the most recent alumni coffees where we bring the, high, the college freshmen back and talk about how well 
um, New Canaan High School prepared them. Many of them described in a college environment where you know all of their note taking must be right. online, and that the you know the professor or TA actually checks it before they leave class that day. And you know it's you know so what they were describing was um, certainly a world where you know the device is integral to their college education. So I'm just wondering how much we're looking forward so that we can then. Um, you know, build those skills into the high school process. I would say that's something we can, we should, and can look at. Okay. Um, the only other thing is that uh, the learning management software that we talk about is also software which is where which is typically used at college level. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's something which I said before. We really need to dig into a little bit deeper. We have some tools we want to look at. What's the most effective tools in that area? Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to follow along with Sherry because now that I, I do have two kids that have just started in college this year, and, and it's true. I mean, everybody has a laptop. All the work is done on that, and I think it's so important that our district is looking to do this program because we want to have our students prepared. So even though for us as parents in our generation, when we're not native digital people, it's difficult and change is hard. But I think the way our, our, our district is approaching it by doing a systematic you know, a pilot study to see, work out the bugs and kind of roll it out. But it's something that has to get rolled out because this is what the kids are doing in college. And they need to be able to work with their technology, understand when it has glitches because they may not have that same kind mm -hmm. of support system that they can get at this level, right. at the college level. I mean, they have support, but it's not as nurturing. And so I'm kind of glad to see that. And it's going to be interesting, you know, even for us, you know, the kids today that are high school uh, are in freshmen. I noticed because I have a younger child, and even the way he looks at technology and uses it as a tool, and what we talked about the tech tour that I think Hazel was mentioning, that they're having, you know, kindergartners, you know, third graders, whatever, using different ways where the kids today didn't use it that way. You know, it was a novelty, and so even for them, they're still not quite the same natives as the kindergartners are today. Or you know, like I see my fifth grade, and they may look at it differently. They may really look at it more as a tool, not such as a novelty to go do other things. But who knows? It might be an age thing too. It'll come and see. But I had um, a question for you too on this, in that um, you know, for you're saying that you know we've got a good Wi-Fi all around except those places. What are your plans, and how quickly, or, or you know, what what is the time frame that you're looking to get more support systems in the other areas? Because like I said, kids, we want to give them the best opportunities to, to you know be able to work on their activities. I think the 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 first step would be to take the additional 18 additional drops. Um, which offers pretty substantial coverage. Um, in an ideal setting, one drop would cover about two classrooms worth of space. Um, uh, however, we have to take into consideration which you know cinder block classrooms, etc. But um, and then prior we're going to prioritize where we place those based on feedback we got from teachers and students. I talked about the theater area. I talked about um, you know the gym, those type of areas. Um, and then we, we should we take it from there and also make sure we have additional feedback from students as we move forward. Uh, I think that's a good way to start for the fall. Uh, and then just continuing to have conversations as we, as we broaden this to make sure we get feedback from students. And then I'm not sure if you addressed this question in your survey, but I always kind of wonder too about, you know, because they get to choose a device. But of course, I've noticed myself that when you look and do things on my computer and the way I handle websites is very different than on my mobile device, you know, where you have to use an app, it's kind of modified. Right. Not all websites react the same way when you do it on an iPhone versus on your iPad versus your computer. Sure. So I'm wondering if the students are getting the same, you know, level of information because you know, it's not working as well like if someone had their Chromebook versus someone, you know, trying to do the work with that uh, with just a little smartphone um, and whether they're realizing that because so, you don't want to have it be, a, a, you know, somebody has a better advantage than the other because their device is not as good as somebody else's device. I don't know right. if you encountered that or if there's issues. I think that when we're talking about, I want to make sure I understand, but basically, you know, students might be utilizing their phone for a reference, but when they're doing the work, they're doing it on the, the laptop. Okay. Um, so I have seen, you have seen some students that have the, the laptop up and the iPhone there, uh, but typically if they're doing, if they're really doing work, they're doing it on the laptop. Well, and just to jump, that's why we had set a minimum specification for the devices that students would bring in, and right. phones were not on the list. Right. There was a screen size piece to that as well. Right. And I think it's all still available on that website as well, the BYOD yeah, website that the high school put together. But it does give out the specifications, the minimum specifications of the devices, with plenty of variety, Chromebooks, iPads, others, but the minimum specs so that there would be a commonality of experience and we, they would not experience what you're Yeah, I think we talked about okay. the screen being 13 inches. That was a minimum kind of thing. 
Yeah. And then I just had one last comment to you know the and Diana you're mentioning about you know this is, we're not being at the forefront of introducing this. Um, I got a chance to speak with a gentleman who used to teach high school, then left to do a, a, a career in law, and now has come back and returned to teaching high school and he teaches AP government. And you know he, I was just asking him you know how the difference is you know from when he taught before and you know now he says that yeah everybody has a device and you know he's teaching high school. So in their high school um, it's out in California because that's where I was. But um, but you know that's what everyone uses and you know he's just noticed that you know a lot less paper you know he's got a couple of things that he posts and he gives out it's very you know efficient with his timing and so again this is something where everybody is today so I'm glad that we're going towards it too Brendan um, is there a standard learning management system that you're anticipating rolling out are you able to sort of force teachers in one direction or another or is that something that's coming down the road you're not quite there yet we're not there yet. Uh, we have had, uh, we use uh, Google Classroom and Moodle. Um, Moodle is something which sort of grew from the ground up here at the high school. There were a few teachers that started using it and uh, had great success w with it. And by word of mouth, it started to spread and it's quite successful. Um, we also have teacher students coming in from the middle school who have experience with Google Classroom. And that's also a platform which we use. But uh, we really do want to spend some time, and we'll be spending some time over the summer looking into what are the options for learning management systems moving forward. Uh, that's not a conversation we haven't <clears throat> dug too deep, de deeply into that yet. It's something which we want to do to make some smart choices moving forward. Okay, so does that mean that in, in the future you'll pick one system and every teacher will be on that system, or is it? It's possible that we have a conversation based on what we learn over the summer and doing okay. our research that we're going to make a recommendation moving forward where um, this is a platform which we feel is going to meet the needs of our students and moving forward. Okay. It's and currently. Also, oh, okay. It's also an opportunity to research what other districts are using. Um, Brian and I had an opportunity to go to Greenwich where they've rolled out K-12. They're using Schoolology and they've trained all the teachers nice. and um, the students on how to utilize it and it's just used at different levels and, and different um, aspects of that program is used based on the developmental needs of the student and the ages of the student. So I think it's something that we really do have to spend some time researching and certainly finding out what other districts are utilizing, you know, being very thoughtful about it, um, and right. then deciding what's going to be the best for us to utilize. Sorry, Brian. Okay. No. Thanks. <laughs> Maria? Um, I just uh, want to say I appreciate the survey I think that was great and I you know I'm one of the people one of the parents that was involved early on um, but I was actually involved when we rolled out Moodle in the high school mm -hmm. and um, I've been very happy with the technology that my older daughter who's a sophomore in, in college uh, received when she was here and had access to so I was wondering one question if you expand this how is that different than what it seems to me the high school students have the flexibility to use the technology you know uh, freshmen uh, sophomores juniors and seniors um, and I have other questions but if you if you want to just answer that I was just wondering how will it be different if you do expand it um, up to the well I grades? think it's about um, I think the feedback that we gathered from the from both the teachers and the students is that the platform, the uh, learning management system uh, is very useful, okay? At this point, it's been by teacher choice, but we probably need to look at how do we publicize that and broaden the teacher, all teachers' understandings of the value of that platform for the learning process, okay? It's sort of been a, a grassroots conversation that's happened up to this point, especially in the area of Moodle, and, and, um, and where it, it's very successful, I would say, and, and uh, but we want to look at if this is working well, how are we broadening our understanding of the teacher's understanding of the value of this, of this resource for teaching and learning? I think and also just a part of your question, I think, Mary, was about the BYOD yeah. program itself, right? Mm -hmm. And what it would be, what the difference would be expanding that in grades 10, 11, 12 versus right. what we have versus what today. We do, yeah. And I, I think one of the um, benefits that popped out for me was about that, the access. Right, that the, the other grades without this now, if a teacher's going to integrate the technology in the classroom, he or she has to sign up for a cart or a lab and logging in versus having the students having the device and being able to, I think, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but integrate it in more um, authentic ways mm -hmm. into the instruction. 
around. Uh, if I'm a teacher, I can use them for three, five, ten minutes in a class, have them open them, use them, put them away, and use that appropriately, where I might not sign out a cart to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if I did, it might take me that long to log into the cart in order to do those pieces. Uh, and not that our carts are bad. I mean, our carts are, are very good, and we've been very successful with them, as you said. But I, I think what we're finding is those that have, in the ninth grade, that are using the BYOD approach, um, they're finding more time in their instruction because the, the students are more familiar right. with the devices and are more um, quick to be able to get into whatever the, the learning is for that, that day. Is that? Uh, the other part was 28% um, answered the survey. So there's still 72% of the parents that didn't and may have input, even though you ask a child um, or a 14-year-old which they prefer Right. A lot will prefer to be online because they, you know, have access to other things. So, at what point do, you know, can parents um, take a more active role in understanding and be being able to convey, you know, maybe note taking on a computer isn't right for, me. you know, how can you balance every teacher expecting a student to bring a computer versus um, some not bringing it, some bringing it, and access, you know, how do you get to those 72 percent of the parents that? didn't give input? I think that, uh, first of all, it, it, the, the opportunity to have an ongoing conversation with parents um, in May to get some information from parents to say, look, what input can we gather as we plan forward? That would be helpful. And also, uh, as we started off, part of this, the next stage, as it was for the, state, the rollout for ninth grade, is how are we communicating this information to parents? We're brought, we broaden that scope of communicating um, uh, this information to all parents 912 that would be a part of, of the process that we'd have to uh, we want to plan for to, uh, in the fall mm -hmm. okay and I do want to reiterate I think the date is uh, May 17th at 9 a.m. Yeah. that they've invited yeah. in doing uh, a grade 9 parent networking session mm -hmm. so that any of those parents have an opportunity to come and and obviously add more input so we're, we're trying to reach out to as many people as possible. Yeah. And I just want to add a suggestion. As you transition, and, and I think we talked about the Moodle, it's not available to parents because you need a login to get uh -huh. in. So I'm wondering if there's a way to make, that's like a textbook in a way, as the textbooks go away yeah. and Moodle becomes the curriculum. Uh -huh. Um, just a suggestion if there's a way to make that accessible to families. And, and there is now, and there's a way to make that open now as well. Uh, you know, the educators can open that up so that parents can have access to what their children do in the classroom as well. But they do need to log in. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So they just email the teachers. Correct. Jen? So I just wanted to thank you for this great presentation. Um, a lot of detail went into this, and I know it's been a lot of work, um, so we really appreciate it. Um, so I have a freshman and a sophomore mm -hmm. at the high school, and it was interesting at the beginning, like in the end of January, I'm like, so how's the BYD? And he's like, ah, oh, you know, like, didn't really give me a lot of feedback, of course, teenage boy. Right. But, um, but I sat down and was kind of talking to him through the survey, which I thought was awesome having these kids do the survey. And it really started getting him thinking and talking about like examples of like, oh yeah, like you know, in math we did this. And so it's been really great for him. And my, my sophomore brings his computer to school every day, right. talks about how the library has been kind of like redone so that all the kids have become a really, I mean, he's an he's a athlete, so he's spending a lot of time doing homework. And so it's been such a great thing for him to be able to take it in and be working on his essays on the Google Docs and, you know, and again, getting that live feedback from teachers, you know, which so we can work on it whenever he has a spare chance. Um, so just curious, do you, um, I know that Jill spoke about um, you guys going to Greenwich to talk about schools. Like, can you just tell me, you know, again, like, you know, I've got, you know, a nephew in Pennsylvania, they all have their own iPads, and, you know, right. you hear, you know, stories of kids in different school districts having different opportunities. Like, in our DRG, are we, you know, can you just give me kind of an inkling on, like, what other areas around us are doing as far as, like, having a, their own device, or are they giving it the device at the beginning of the school year? Um, I think it, it, we have similar uh, DIRGs have, uh, have initiatives where they're trying to broaden the rollout of providing devices for students. Okay, um, Jill, I'm wondering whether you had some details about. Um, sure, I have a couple. Sure. Of things Greenwich and Darien, sure. I think, which sure. would be helpful for. Well, me. Greenwich, uh, as Jill mentioned, we had a wonderful visit there with the uh, superintendent and other superintendents around the area, uh, and Greenwich is um, distributing iPads at their elementary levels, and then Chromebooks from the middle school up. 
Um, so, and they're providing those devices. In Ridgefield, it looks like middle school up, so middle school and high school will be provided with Chromebooks next year. Yeah. Is there? Um, Darien is in discussion now around K-12 devices. Um, they may be different between iPads and Chromebooks at different levels, but looking at a K-12. Um, and Westport, two years ago, or was it even this year in the fall, this year. began yeah, this their year. 9 through 12 BYOD rollout across the school. So it is something that you know our, the schools in our DERG are um, doing as well, you know, sort of moving around in different ways. Uh, the, you know, the models are different around district supplied versus uh, you know, individual supplied as we're doing it. I think the, the graph that showed about 50% of our parents provide, purchased a device for this purpose and the other 50 did not. Um, I do want to reiterate the fact that we have devices available for families that would, uh, for whatever reason, be unable to provide them and, uh, and we can go ahead and do that has been the approach. Um, and I do also just, while, I, while I'm speaking, want to reiterate that you know, people look at this and say, wow, we get to save so much money. But as you heard, the, the Wi-Fi needs, for instance, are now you know, increasing as we're going through and doing this. And we had the, the Wi-Fi initiative here at the high school just two years ago. And yet, just in those two years, the technology has changed, uh, where now we have a different protocol that's faster and better, and you know, the devices are using more and more and more bandwidth. So there, is, there certainly are uh, certain steps that we'll have to take to maintain you know, in the, the infrastructure, because as we discussed two years ago and even last year, it is the, the strength of the infrastructure that does have a significant bearing on the success of the program sure. as we're going through and doing this work. But we are seeing that uh, that work that we did those years ago, two years ago or so, now we're, we're reaping some of the benefits of that by being able to you know, use these devices the way that we are and use the Wi-Fi and the network and things. Um, and we'll continue to uh, you know, keep an eye on that and make sure that that's working well. Thank you, Henny. I was wondering if you had any uh, thoughts about um, what the time frame would be for rolling this out to, throughout New Canaan High School. Our maybe, goal, maybe if you said it, I'm sorry, I missed our it. Our goal would be to roll it out 9-12 in the fall. This coming fall? This fall. Okay. Yes. And then I was. it says a majority of students to teachers had positive BYOD experiences. Were there any students for whom it didn't work, you know, who, students who, you know, whose grades kind of precipitously fell for no apparent reason? And if so, um, kind of what support or what actions uh, would we as a district be taking? I don't have any feedback uh, on a student having a device and that device causing them to having greater difficulties academically. Okay. Thank you. Um, just looking in that if you are looking to do this for the fall, yeah. um, and I know that you wanted uh, to have a lot of support and for the technical aspects, mm -hmm. how is your tech expert program going? I mean, because it seems like it'd be natural to have those who excel, and there's plenty of students here who really this, they thrive on this, um, that could be provided. And I think students really deal well with other students. So if you've got now four grades that are gonna be doing this with more technical problems, you wanna have a, a good force. Right. Um, where are you with that? I, I would say it's going quite well. I think that um, I referenced in the slide, where that's probably a resource which we want to continue to build out uh, to provide additional support for, for students that may need it uh, moving forward. Uh, the tech experts are, are they're approachable, they're very knowledgeable, and they're very helpful, and, uh, and, and they've been a great resource in trying to make sure that we troubleshoot things for, for students in a very timely manner. So uh, my goal would be to work with uh, the tech integrators to make sure we can, we can provide that and broaden that moving forward. And, and that's just it. for clarity, the tech experts is a student group. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Led by Tom and Hannah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And they do sort of for that first level support, but it's all students and uh, really a great initiative that started, I think, last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. last yes. year. Just Thanks. how large is, or, or I mean, are we talking about five students, 10, 20? I just gotta get how some. Many, it's, yeah, it's. <laughs> Good answer. The student did, did not know how to do something yesterday. Bill, being the person that is helping me today, uh, he'll find out from Matt, and the knowledge is really transferring. So we're getting to the tech expert level. They, 
when we're getting to the tech expert level, they really do need the help. I mean, that's the, you're, you're kind of stumping the chumps to really kind of figure out how to get a problem going. So it, it's, it's an ongoing process. And just from tech night, you saw how many kids participated. I think they're all going to be able to, you know, increase the knowledge just across the board. One, one other, um, so just along that, that's for the student support for the teachers because I think the professional learning and because something new, I mean, is very needed. And I think they all would like to have it. Um, would you be doing programs over the summer so that you start off or you kind of introduce it all and then they kind of learn on hand or get a chance to speak with all the freshman teachers who kind of had experience for a whole, you know, semester or whatever that can kind of say, look out for this or do this or this is how you plan for it, your lesson? Uh, so much of that has been an ongoing conversation. I, it's, it's, um, it's, it's been feedback which we gathered from the pilot from last year from teachers that, that uh, did the pilot or you ha we learned from their feedback and I think it's a continuing conversation about uh, how we pr provide teachers with, with some, some guidance in preparing for the fall. Okay. Maria? Um, just to go back to the, the question about student outcomes, and I know we're only two months into this, but will you look at, uh, like, to see if there's any trends between the overall freshman grades, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, you know, to see if there's any impact? And the other thing is, are there any examples or cases where teachers are using technology and the outcome with the students is increasing something, you know, better student outcomes because they did something differently using technology versus something they had done in the past? Um, are, are you looking for anything like that or is that something down the road? Well, I think what we're looking for is based on that SAMR model, you know, how is technology really transforming the learning experience? So uh, the conversations we have is, <clears throat> you know, looking at the lessons that are provided by teachers and saying, well, where, where does this fall? Where does this fall in the learning experience for students? Is this, um, and is this really shifting that learning experience in a fundamental and significant way? Um, I think we'll also see it as they do progress on the SAMR model, as you mentioned. I, I, Spencer, I think, mentioned it about the science project and the science lab. Right. That we'll see it in the opportunities that are provided to our students as far as demonstration of knowledge. Uh, you know, they, <coughs> it shifts a bit, right? Where they're, when they, students have access on the devices as they do, um, they're, they're learning different types of skills around being discerning consumers of the information that's available to them. They're learning to be responsible producers of, the, of new information as they're creating new things. Um, they are, they're finding different and more creative ways to sort of almost work interdisciplinarily to pull together um, different learnings that they may have had to create something new as a learning outcome. So I think one of the things we will be monitoring will be the demonstrations of student knowledge as they go through um, and what types of, of probably more, I would look for more performance-based assessments. Uh, I'd look for more authentic and sort of hands-on types of outcomes from students as demonstrations of what they know or are able to do as a result of whatever they're learning. Just another, another measure. Okay, Hazel? I just wanted to ask, is there, is there any advice that you would give to parents about word processing or old-fashioned typing? Is that something that's helpful to have as a skill? Uh, it's something they can practice at home. I mean, they're on, you can do it on the computer. You don't have to take lessons or anything. It's readily available. Is it helpful to be able to have that facility? Oh, yeah, it's definitely helpful for students to have that, that skill. Uh, that's why we're focusing on those, those typing skills all the way back at the elementary level. Um, and we have uh, you know, typing lessons, uh, whether that's type to learn or edu typing, which we, we deliver starting at the elementary level. Because we know that students have to be proficient in that. Um, we don't want typing to get in, in the way of the learning process, but, um, and, and quite frankly, you see most students we're seeing is that either they know the traditional home row or they've developed their own method where it just works for them and they, um, the, the typing process is not an, an obstacle to mm -hmm. the learning process. But we're making sure that we provide the fundamental teaching so that students understand, um, you know, uh, how typing can be, you know, be learned and help them in the learning process. Okay, I have a question that's a little bit in the weeds, but um, you know, you were talking about how you're getting like charging, or you'll get uh, charging strips in the back so mm -hmm. that kids can, and I don't know if you've looked at or we already have, or um, just like charging blocks at the high school so the kids, so they don't have to, you know, 
stop their lesson, bring, go back to the back of the classroom, or even you know doing kind of how we did the BYOD, where we encourage families to. That's one of the things you buy for your kids at the beginning of the year, and they have it in their backpack, and then we'll have a store here at the school. I don't know if you've looked at that or if it's not really practical or too heavy. <laughs> well, one thing we did was try and uh, add charging to the cafeteria. It hasn't really caught on yet. Okay. But, but we added strips of power all throughout the cafeteria okay. that people could bring their d devices during yeah. the time they're in the cafeteria as well as charge up. But okay. uh, you know, it's probably not caught on as much as we'd like <laughs> to see so far. And in addition to that, we, um, we do have chargers on loan that uh, students can borrow from the library. Okay, so uh, and they do. They check them out and they borrow them and they charge up. And we also have charging stations which we purchase for the ninth grade BYOD, so that they have these little uh, little kiosks where they can charge as well. Okay. Um, so maybe we'll have to look into. I you know out, I was uh, out west and I saw all these uh, solar power charging stations yep. outside and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that fits BYOP. in with the beautification lake. Hang out in the beautification <laughs> spot. Yeah, hook it up with the beautification. Thank you. That's right. Um, what do you, and I don't, I'm not sure because I was just thinking about you know how the the uh, orchestra group you know you, you rent out instruments you know and you have insurance policy for the insur instrument you use it for it. Technology is changing so quickly. So for as we kind of go forward, if, if parents don't want to buy a computer because two years they would want to have this other computer and you know you, you don't want to buy it for a short period. Sure. Would we ever do something like that where we had like a, a rental with, you know, some tech, I don't know if that even exists, you know, and you just paid insurance and fee rather. So it's not somebody who do, can't afford or whatever, can't do it, you know, in that way, but if they just would like to have an opportunity to buy something that they don't have to commit for because in four years they would, or if they buy it in the middle school, you know, it's a little more cost effective or if they want to wait for the next model to come out or something, you know, for a year. That has not been a conversation we've had yet. Okay, just yeah. an idea. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you, thank you. Bill and Matt, and, and uh, I really appreciate Thank uh, you very Tom. much. Coming. No, no voting. Presentation. Okay. And I know you mentioned in the beginning, but Matt just jumped on board in August and has been uh, spearheading this along with Bill and <laughs> Tom and everybody else. And uh, I want to echo the thanks that, uh, you know, as, as I told him the day before he started, the treadmill doesn't slow down. You just have to run fast enough to catch up to it. And, uh, and they're doing a wonderful job at it and, and keeping us right on the path and, and doing the, the right work. So it's exciting stuff. Thank Amazing. you, guys. Thank you.